Well, good evening and welcome, everybody. We got Ukraine update with the shills where we dive into the week's activities. We got the man operator Starsky here with us, of course, as well. He's going to give us some headlines and whatnot. And first and foremost, though, to Ali on Discord, I wanted to give a huge birthday shout out. Probably sitting there with that good looking kid of hers uh, hanging out watching the show. So, hey, Ali, happy birthday! And, uh, Okay, yeah, now that I got that all covered, because I wanted to make sure before we got too into things that I didn't forget, let's get right to Operator Starsky, and he's going to take us through his personal picks for some headlines. Operator Starsky. Thank you so much, bro. Uh, hi, everyone. Operator Starsky here, and today we have uh, quite a few news. So uh, according to a counselor of um Kherson uh, military administration, Sergei Khan. So today he said that uh, Ukrainian armed forces have destroyed the the last uh, existing bridge over Dnipro. Uh, and uh, yeah, and basically uh, Russians don't have any uh, any paths to use to cross the river and uh, deliver their vehicles and uh, ammunition which is great uh so uh, yeah uh, also uh, chief of um southern di direction i don't know how to call it proper, properly in english uh of armed forces of ukraine proved that as well and uh, of course uh, russians can attempt to uh, repair the bridge and try and bring uh, their vehicles to repair it and stuff but it takes time and uh, cost and uh, human resources as well and uh, all those vehicles will be destroyed as well uh, so despite the fact that uh, ukraine uh, proved to be uh, successful in using high precision weapons long range weapons uh, but uh, still we should not uh, underestimate uh, russian potential because they still have uh, quite a lot of uh, weapons uh, and artillery and uh, uh, they have uh, quite a lot of big caliber officers so uh today uh the region of nikopol was uh, shelled by russian artillery and uh obviously 152 millimeter uh, officers were used uh, and uh, russians also have probably something around 40 their uh, kinjal missiles and uh, as for their um, cruise missiles like uh, caliber and uh, uh, iskander uh, they th their supply of those missiles is still kind it's not impressive they're running out of them but they still have quite a few of those and uh, this, uh, those uh, missiles at this point obviously are being saved for uh, hitting um, decision-making centers like Kyiv or other big cities of Ukraine. Um, one of the good news is that uh, we received information that uh, this private military company Wagner, used by Russians, uh, so almost all the prisoners because we know that uh, they've been um, enlisting uh, prisoners into this uh, private mil military company around uh, russia so they have enlisted almost 200 uh, of those uh, convicts from two russian prisons uh, one of them is called uh, Obuchova. It's near Peter Saint Petersburg, and another one uh, is called Pankovka. It's near Veliky Novgorod, 
two hundred of those convicts uh, are reported uh, killed in action in Ukraine, according to their friends, uh, to their uh, families, and to uh, the uh, the convicts that were in the in those prisons uh, with them. So almost two hundred of them are already demilitarized in Ukraine. And uh, one of the interesting news is that uh, in his speech, Putin uh, stopped mentioning Ukraine at all, which is kind of interesting because uh, Ukrainian topic was one of the main topics in his speeches previously. And... Uh, and during his last uh, public speech, he he didn't even even mention Ukraine, uh, which basically says that he doesn't want to talk about it. I mean, like even uh, when he was desperate and he was mentioning, you know, like using like nuclear weapons and stuff, but currently it's different. Um, so probably he doesn't want to talk about Ukraine in order not to draw attention of Russians to this topic, which actually says a lot. Um, according to uh, the Washington Post's uh, uh, investigation, uh, Russia is trying to capture uh sources of different minerals and coal and gas and other resources in ukraine that cost uh, around 12 trillion dollars in total and uh it's uh, like two-thirds of all the natural resources in ukraine so in case they manage to capture those resources, Ukraine is going to lost uh, two thirds of their resources. Uh, that most of them is uh, situated in Donbass, of course. And uh, uh, another good news is that uh, Latvia has recognized Russia as a country that supports terrorism uh wow. of course yeah of course it's official now and uh, of course uh, russia was like medvedev was furious and uh, he started uh threatening uh latvia with different consequences but zero dams were given about it today and uh, also, Czechia, uh, Czech Republic supports the uh, restriction of giving tourist visas to Russians. And I think that uh, soon it will turn into a basically good practice to prohibit them from coming to uh europe to european countries um basically because they don't bring anything good and we remember that there's like 400 russian spies operating on the uh, on the west and in europe in particular so yeah um and uh, uh also today uh, a lot of international institutions um, as well as notorious Amnesty International have uh, uh, have called Russia to uh, stop using the Zaporizhian nuclear power plant uh, to uh, blackmail the world, basically. Yeah. Because what they do is uh, it, it it basically looks like you know uh, what isis would do so they're they're using uh then the nuclear power plant that they have captured to threaten the world 
and uh, of course they try to to use it to uh, push their demands uh, so yeah I think that uh, recognizing Russia as a country that supports terrorism is cor correct thing to do in this completely case. valid yeah yeah completely so yeah those were most of our news uh, for today uh, again in 30 days that passed russia uh, did not achieve any significant uh, military goal on the front lines uh, i would even say it's kind of opposite so so yeah well um speaking of evidence and credibility and uh Propaganda and whatnot, uh, Starsky, have we not hit a new low throughout the world with the whole Steven Seagal visit? Oh, my God. Uh, Steven right? Seagal, I mean, yeah. Uh, St Steven Seagal is a, is a uh, completely different topic that I can talk about for, like, hours. <laughs> In uh, um, uh, let's see here. I, I've got an article up uh, here. I'll bring it up. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, Kremlin spokesman Steven Seagal visits occupied Ukraine to spread propaganda. And reading this almost reads like it came from a science fiction book that was just rejected by every publisher and just left to rot and discovered one day in the future it's it's unbelievable um yeah so uh, basically he chose he chose to you know instead of being a uh how you call it in instead of serving in having in heaven we prefer to rule in hell uh something like this yeah it's uh, um uh better better to better not to be a servant in heaven but to rule in hell yeah exactly so um we know that uh he fled to to russia after numerous scandals after like uh numerous lawsuits that were you know, um, a, a lot of uh, female actresses uh, tried to sue him for like harassment and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so he went to to Russia to find you know a better life. Uh, and of course, uh, because everything is much cheaper on the east uh for people from the west so it's like you know the the um uh, the the best way to become successful is you know to work on the west and live on the east because everything is so cheap uh again he wasn't really lucky because uh russian ruble is being artificially pumped up and uh yeah and uh dollar becomes cheaper in Russia, which means that uh, he basically lost a lot of money, uh, but it's like anyways. Um, so yeah, uh, Stephen Seagal, I wouldn't call him very popular here. So the the only movie he is um, remembered for, basically in in our part of the world, is uh, that with oh my god, with Tommy Lee Jones. Um, can you remind uh, me, please? I, I'm trying to remember. I was never much of a fan with them to begin with because, well, he was always that B grade action hero. He was never as good as the real big shooters in the genre, right? He was, he was always kind of weak. Uh, yeah, under siege, under siege. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah, and that's basically the only movie that he's remembered for. Uh, like, I have no idea why he made a lot of movies, but it's like, probably they weren't very popular among our people here. 
and on, on the East in general. Yeah, and like uh, Russians despise Americans a lot. They basically despise everybody uh, out, who comes from outside of Russia. So I don't think I don't think that he would be very that he is very welcomed there, anyways. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> This day and age, he has a small following in North America and so on. That's for sure. Holy. If you look at his uh, IMDb page for some of his more recent movies, they all have a rating of like two and whatnot. It's just hilarious. Yeah, he, he's like a living meme. Uh, yeah, in totally. Word, in word. Yeah. You know, um, let's see here. Um we have a couple of uh, donations and chats we can get in. We'll see if Amy's free or not over there. She might not be yet. It's uh, tough to know because I know there was a little bit of parenting going in the background at the same time. No, okay, not quite yet, I don't think. So um, I wonder if we've got a couple of questions ready Dave might want to throw in here. Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, there's one from Cheryl who asks, do you know what happened to the beautiful singer under Azovstal? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it again, please? I had some... Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. There's probably bombs going off over your head. Don't worry about it. Cheryl is asking, do you know what happened to the beautiful singer under Azovstal? Uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, I I tried to find at least any news, but no luck, unfortunately. Damn. That answers that question. Uh, just Nilawaz. So was the challenge with some of these names? The power plant really attacked by five rockets. Uh, we have information that uh, it was uh, shelled actually and um uh they tr tried to launch uh, rockets like over this nuclear plant uh, a couple of weeks ago but uh, recently they basically shelled the the nuclear power plant itself and uh, some systems were damaged including the uh, nitric and oxygen uh systems so there is a risk of, um, as far as I remember, of a uh, hydrogen leak um, and a leak of radiation. Wow. And that's very serious, basically. And uh, I think that yeah. the world should react because, you know, the the United Nations were created to uh, make sure that nothing like this will ever happen but they are unlucky to have a terrorist as a member of united nations uh, so i think that they they should really do something about it could you also um clarify i know this might sound like an obvious question but we have to bring everybody in to the conversation who might be completely new and watching us for the first time hello to you um what is the difference between uh rockets and, and shelling specifically uh specifically uh, rockets are used uh, mostly in uh, multiple rocket launch systems and uh, those are unguided uh jet propelled uh shells that fly with uh, the speed uh, bigger than the speed of sound um, and speaking of jet i mean like uh hard like solid jet uh fuel not not the, the liquid one um shells are basically used uh, in uh harvesters like 152 millimeter harvesters big caliber big guns that fire shells um amy is ready we got a, a donation and super chat we can get caught up on and then we've got a couple of more queries to get to 
No, uh, yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, we have a donation from Decula03 for Canadian $10. Says, Moskva, the Air Force Base Artillery Armored Mobile. Ukrainian fighters are amazing. Thank you so much, Decula. And then we had... Sam Williams for New Zealand $10 says, I read today that Russians are planning to organize lynch courts in Mariupol. They really are severely underdeveloped in the modern world. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is true. So uh, we even have pictures uh, of Russians preparing uh, cages for, um, for uh, the, the prisoners. And uh, probably they will try to lynch them or something. Uh, I uh, let me just uh, find a link for you because I've had it somewhere here. Um, just a second. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Just all right. Just give me a minute. Sure. Slide it over and I can bring it up. We uh we had a couple of reports in our local or well, not local but national news um Russia's really struggling to replenish troops right now. Nobody wants to. Uh yeah, it's true. Nobody wants to and uh they didn't even start uh mobilizing people in rich cities uh like oh wow. uh, yeah like uh moscow like saint petersburg um and uh, because this will uh, this may result in uprisings uh so people in moscow people in uh, St. Petersburg, they think that, you know, the war is kind of far away and uh, nothing bad happens to them and things like that. And uh, I've just uh, dropped you the, the link into the, into the chat. Yeah, I got it up on the screen there now. Let me just enlarge it a bit here if I can. There we go. Is that yeah, coming so, up for you? Is, sorry, yeah, yeah. Persky, is that coming up for you? All right. Yeah. Uh, so what they're trying to do is to have this like tribunal, you know, uh, they, they try to reenact the Nuremberg tribunal over uh, those guys and uh, they want to pump up the hatred as much as possible. You know, they want to turn it into a big show, basically. Uh, so yeah, it's not like they're underdeveloped. I would say that they are not developed whatsoever. Um, and by the way, let's return to famous actors. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Steven Seagal. I'm talking about, uh, people who support, uh, Ukraine. So Mila Kunis and Ashton, uh, Ashton Kutcher are known for uh giving numerous donations uh to uh, ukrainian refugees and uh, they're famous for fundraising and uh, i wow, think cool. that yeah i think that uh, the the fundraiser that they had uh, raised over 18 million dollars wow uh, yeah so there's um, leonardo dicaprio who donated $10 million to support Ukraine. Uh, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. And Ryan Reynolds, oh my God, I, I, I freaking love this dude. Uh, David Beckham and Victoria Beckham. And also, you got to check out the uh, Instagram of... Uh, oh, oh my God. Oh, geez, I, I, I forgot, my memory sucks. Uh, the, the 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 editor who made uh, pulp fi pulp fiction. 
Oh, uh, Tarantino. Tarantino, yeah. So Tar Tarantino is one of the biggest supporters of Ukraine. And we also know that uh, Chuck Norris was noticed. Uh, yeah, supporting uh, Ukraine as well. I, I didn't doubt in Chuck Norris, of course. And uh, doubting and in Chuck Norris is uh, only permitted in dire straits of pure satanic conversion. Otherwise, true. no, you may not. True, true. And uh, also Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of our supporters. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about like stars, celebrities, professionals, people who were successful and uh yeah and they they are nice people um Very also cool. uh, benedict cumberbatch is also a big supporter so uh you can find a lot of information of uh his supporting uh him supporting humanitarian efforts in ukraine as well um uh, so yeah that's awesome good list i like that very much there's uh there's probably a few that would like to be on that list, but they you know they're the ones that always get into tax trouble and stuff and get themselves all screwed up. <laughs> I'm just picking on people. Um, so let's see here. Um, Amy, did you want to do that uh, shout out that we got there, and uh, we'll see where we are here. Ah, uh, yes, please. That would be brilliant. We have from Vasi Gancheva. We have um. 20 Bulgarian love who says you who sent us a you are amazing pair sticker. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your support as well. Thank you. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks. And thank uh, I think Dave had a couple more questions lined up. So we should probably uh, do that before we, you know, meander on to uh, whatever we end up talking about and stuff between us. Right. Mine as well. Uh, Shine is asking, are there any updates about Ukraine pilots training in NATO aircraft? No updates as of today. Fair enough. Uh, Rodent, no last name, says, I saw a video of a farming family saying that the Russian invaders were surprised that the farm had piped gas fuel and indoor bathrooms. Is this true? Uh, they were surprised that uh, we had working toilets. Uh, I think that this explains a lot. Uh, so majority of Russian people, and I'm talking about people living outside of uh, their only developed cities like Moscow and uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, so majority like two-thirds of those people they use pit toilets um and um, their like farms and agriculture in general is like a big ruin so there are villages that uh don't receive like food for like weeks and the only thing they can do there is basically drink so uh, life is very, very tough there. And it's uh, the, the, the main reason it's tough is because, uh, like, compare Russia to other countries uh, that are rich of fuel, right? right? Like uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and uh, like those countries. I mean, uh, Arabic countries that are rich uh, of fuel, of of oil and uh, natural resources, there's like desert. There's like nothing, and they make they they turn those countries into oases, right? So they build like uh, biggest high scrapers in the world. And uh, they make sure that they, their people uh, have a good quality of life as much as it's possible in, in those areas because, like, it, it's desert when almost nothing grows. And still they manage to turn those, those countries into, like, you know, uh, heaven, basically. Uh, why it doesn't happen in Russia is because... Um, 
in Arabic countries, people receive uh, a, like a piece of income uh, for the oil. In Russia, it doesn't happen. In Russia, only oligarchs and Putin, of course, receive like a majority of the income and the rest is given to, you know, to um, uh, fund uh, their army again as, as much as possible because we know that uh, their army turned out to be not uh, as cool as it was pictured in their uh, propaganda and stuff like that um so th that's the reason why people in russia are so poor and uh, at some point uh, ukrainians it's like years ago probably uh, ukrainians used to go to uh, russia and work there um because the salaries in cities like moscow and saint petersburg were not dramatically higher than in Ukraine, but still a bit higher. Uh, for example, in Poland, you could uh, earn much more money than uh, in Russia. Um, but still, uh, it, it was like that. So Russia used to be kind of richer, you know, uh, than in Ukraine. But it, it was like only in the in those main hubs like Moscow, like uh, St. Petersburg. Everything else is a ruin. And uh, it's so different from, from Ukraine, because in Ukraine we care about agriculture, and uh, it uh, started developing, I would say, somewhere around uh, 2010, something like that. Uh, before that, it, it, it was in a bad condition, of course, but now it's much better. Um, so they were so amazed when they saw Ukrainian villages that have roads, you know, made of asphalt. And it was like personal insult for Russians to see that Ukrainians live better, that Ukrainians have better quality of life. Even like not dramatically better, but still better. Uh, so yeah. And there's, you know, there's that, there's almost like we talked about this before, uh, Starsky, there's almost this ingrained belief in the system that they are superior. So, uh, um, I would also say that that uh, in and of itself leads to propaganda being believed, even in the modern day of social media, where you can see through it. But it applies, you know, to you know, what you were saying there, 100% as well, I think. Yeah, and um, they believe that they are superior, again, because of this uh, ideology that they have. Uh, so, um, on the first place, they believe that uh, they are like God's chosen people, that uh, they are toughest people in the world, they have like toughest rulers, toughest sportsmen, toughest military, and stuff like that. They... They honestly believe in this. And uh, also, um, they, uh, according to the propaganda that is shared by their ideologists, like Dugin, for example, and uh, Medvedev, by the way, likes to repeat that over and over again. So it's like uh, they tell their population that all the world is against them, that's why they can literally kill everybody and uh, they will not be responsible for that. Uh, and uh, Russians will gladly follow because, you know, they can kill, they can loot, and uh, they, they will not be punished for doing those crimes. Um, that's part of their ideology. Uh, Putin once said uh, some shit like, uh, they will all just freaking die, uh, but if we die, we go to heaven, you know? Which sounds a bit like, you know, something from ISIS. 
Oh, but that whole that whole control of the afterlife has so much more control over people just rather than, you know, the results of not paying your taxes. Right. Yeah, of course, we can promise them better, better life in afterlife than here on Earth. And yeah, they will gladly believe in that uh, because, again, their church is very, very strong. Um, I cannot say that uh, they follow uh, the Ten Commandments, right? But uh, yeah, they follow what they're... If, uh, if, if, if they do, Starsky, they must have fucking snuck a few of their own amendments in because we're not seeing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, they follow what uh, those uh, Russian priests say. And uh, they are very, very influential there in Russia. Dastardly. It is, though. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of being like, you know, a clown about it, but I'm not being a clown about it in reality just you know having fun um so i think are we all caught up yeah uh no we're not we have a member chat uh yes we do please we definitely have a member chat let me see we also had a super chat as well from um sam williams for new zealand twenty dollars yes. she says yes she says what do you think of the future what do you think the future of a surgic will be? Is the use of Russian words decreasing or will it take a while to fade out? I don't know enough, but I'm assuming more children are being born to only speak Ukrainian. Uh, so uh, surgic is uh, a mix of uh, Russian and Ukrainian language. The origin of surgic is, uh, remember I told you that uh, during the Soviet times, uh, it was popular to pretend you are Russian because uh, Russians would laugh at people speaking like Ukrainian language, Belor Belarusian language. Uh, that's why people uh, tried to, you know, mimic Russians. Um, and in mostly rural areas, uh, it turned into some kind of uh, surgic and by the way, it wasn't like in 80s or 70s. It comes from something like 30s, maybe even 20s. Um, because, again, Ukrainian language uh, was prohibited numerous times, both in Russian Empire, both in Soviet Union uh, by Russian Bolsheviks. Um, and uh, still a lot of people, you, you, like from rural areas, uh, mostly they use the surgic. Uh, myself, I use it a, a lot sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, yeah, but it's like a mix of Russian words in Ukrainian way of speaking. Of speaking. Uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, it will be cleared or cleaned out of Ukrainian language eventually. And yeah, I hope that uh, we will all put enough efforts into, you know, making Ukrainian language uh, more liter literal, li lit literatural. Okay. Yeah. The okay. word you were looking for was literacy. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then we also have Cats Cats, who's a member for three months, says, can you do a GoFundMe to get Grandpa a car? Oh. Yeah, that's an interesting one, too. I thought that was really good. Great idea. Thank you. And uh, then... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, he needs one. I think he, uh, like, has a car. Uh, oh. I, I got to check it out, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, yeah. but, it's, but it's, it's like you know, I I I know uh, Grandpa Savkovich, and he's like a very old school person. Yeah. Uh, so he's uh, very like uh, stick to his uh, shotgun. I doubt that he would like uh, <laughs> something better than that uh, because you know it's the only thing th th he knows basically. And 
But um, but Starsky, if he wants to shoot and bail when it comes to orc hunting, we could get him a lovely 6.3 liter AMG wagon from a few years ago <laughs> for a good used price. And fuck, he'd be out of there so fast it wouldn't be funny. And he could just keep counting by cooking a little, you know, a notch with his knife on the dashboard on the passenger side, you know, keep count for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I I talked to him, so uh, I uh, met him to pass uh, medicine, and uh, we were right. talking. He told me that uh, he likes walking because it makes him uh, feel better. Because you know when oh, good, good. Uh, when he, he has this stationary way of life, you know, sitting all the day or or mm -hmm. just sitting in one place, uh, it's worse because. Yes. Um, he he has like um some issues with his lungs and uh, he yep. had a couple operations on his heart there's like a couple implants and stuff like that and uh, he said that uh, when he when he moves and walks uh, it makes him feel better because uh, his blood uh, starts pumping you know and stuff like that uh, Actually, so yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 not like he's suffering from walking. Uh, good, good. Th th that's what he told me. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. And then we had Debbie Carvalho who uh, had a super chat for Canadian five dollars. Says, "I saw somewhere that Russians are using microchips from washing machines. Is this true?" <laughs> so. Um, there are microchips that uh, can be purchased on AliExpress, um, and uh, those were found in uh, the remains of Russian uh, guided guided rock guided rockets. Yeah, basically guided rockets. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, the, the the funniest thing is that uh, those microchips were not military grade microchips. So it's like uh, chips oh. used in uh, appliances, they, like like yeah, weren't they? Uh, yeah, uh, Starsky, weren't they just low end sort of uh, arm cores that you would find in like uh, cheap phones from like ten years ago? But they're still good enough to run the smart features of a modern appliance. Isn't that what they were do doing? And I mean, that's that's not a hardened piece of military kit. That's one step away from if you drop it, who knows where it's going to hit, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and uh, that, that's like the I, like the idea of, uh, you know, of, of their, um, uh, you know. It's desperate. It's, it's not like desperacy. It's um, the idea of Russia being great because they can use uh, different crap in order to to achieve their goals, like, you know, using those uh, um, UAVs, those drones with, uh, you know, photo cameras stuffed inside and stuff like that. And uh, they believe that uh, because they can use that, because they can adapt, they can basically use all kinds of scrap in order to create, you know, something that will help them uh i li literally i wanted to make a video on this so as uh as long as i remember myself there was uh, a tv show on russian television here in ukraine we watched russian television as well it was called crazy hands and uh, in that video they would uh you know, like it, it was like do it yourself show. So they were explaining, for example, uh, oh, oh my God, how to make different things out of different crap, out of different garbage. Like uh, how to make a, a boiler from like two pieces of metal and, and the wire, basically something like that. Um, and it, and it was like, for as long as I remember myself, I was a little kid and they had that TV show. Uh, yeah, they were like, take a plastic bottle, take a knife, make holes in this bottle. Voila, now you have some, some crazy shit, you know? Uh, and the reason they did that show basically was because they couldn't buy it. 
uh, they they literally had uh, nothing to uh, like they didn't have as much of things uh, as uh, as on the west right they, they didn't have nothing like that um and uh, yeah and it it doesn't sh like personally for me when uh, a bunch of terrorists uses microchips from laundry machines to build their rockets it's not a an example of you know best practices it's not an example of intelligence nothing like that the best example of intelligence is if you make a freaking factory and find people smart enough th th who can make microchips and pay them a lot of money and make the, and like uh, give them good salary so and and what's even better is why don't you produce your freaking own laundry machines for like common people instead of you know yeah. assembling them in order to get those chips and use them in rockets i mean that's that's crazy like why you have to find some crap in order to make some crappy stuff if you can build if you can invest into development and build a freaking factory yeah and and starsky if you if you follow that out to the inevitable conclusion what it comes down to is take care of your own people and maybe your neighbors will want to come together with like trade agreements and and you know become a little bit more integrated like the eu uh duh <laughs> like yeah fuck. yeah it's it's obvious why not <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then we have one from Estelle who Jaguar who says for 10 pounds sterling says, what in your opinion happened in Crimea? I'm sticking with my war dolphin theory, attaching bombs on them. LOL. Hope Fuch is doing well. They... Um, <laughs> in Crimea. Well, uh, as I said uh, in my previous stream, I think it's like, you know, smoking combined with saltpeter. So whenever something explodes in Russia uh, or, for example, uh, like those. Uh... Oh, Starsky's just zoned out oh. on the meat there for a second. There oh, you go. Okay. Are you back? Y yeah, yeah. I'm there here. you go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when those ammunition depots go off, uh, Russians blame saltpeter. They say that uh, Russian soldiers bring a lot of salt, Peter, you know, used to fertilize land. Um, and salt, Peter, explodes like hell. So, like, guys, don't don't ever use salt, Peter, for fertilizing your gardens because it's freaking dangerous. And, okay. and of course, don't smoke near that. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> okay. Then we have up next, we have Autistic Shill, member for two months, for four months, says, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Autistic Shill. And then we have T Tessa Liovo for 20 euros, who says, I'm a Finnish Russophile, but I detest Putin and his unjust invasion. Tchaikovsky would probably be denied making music in today's Russia. Also, Putinists should study what ian kershaw would tell them about lgbtq history <laughs> absolutely so thank you for those and then we had david oliver for five pounds sterling who says what's happening about them butterfly mines that can maim and be mistaken for toys uh yeah so they are using uh it's in you in ukrainian language we call them just a second, let me translate it because uh, uh, just a second. Uh, a petal or okay. a petal, yeah. So um, in Russian language, it's called a petal. Uh, this mine, and uh, this mine is dropped from. Uh, 
rock like containers carried by rockets that are launched from their multiple rocket launch systems or from their uh, a, like uh, aircraft and uh, those containers are full of those uh, small petal mines um, they they kind of look like a toy they look like uh, you know um, th there's basically a uh, an analog i think in uh, in america mm -hmm. uh, and uh, russians basically stole the design um so uh. Yeah, uh, they drop those bon th those mines. Uh, they make them scattered around, and uh, they are not very powerful. They are only powerful enough to, uh, like, uh, bring like injuries and uh, like tear off legs, like feet and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, as far as I know, they also have a mechanism for self-destruction. So after like a week or two weeks, uh, they uh, self-destruct. But they kind of supposed to self-destruct. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't always happen. Oh, um, yeah, and uh, the, the worst thing is that, uh, yeah, of course... Um, they are very hard to uh, see because they have this um, plastic green kind of body, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, they are very hard to spot uh, in the green area, like bushes and 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 them on the grass. Um, they are also uh, kind of hard to be found with uh, metal detectors. Um, and um, yeah, be, because they they have just small amount of metal parts, um, and yeah, they they are very dangerous. But uh, they look very attractive, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, uh, it it means that uh, children, for example, under big danger because uh, they can try to touch or grab those mines, and yeah. Uh, but uh, those mines are not the the worst things that we have uh, experienced. For example, uh, they have uh, the the mine that is called POM2. Uh, P O M two. Those mines are delivered by uh, RPGs, so uh, they are attached to RPG rockets. Uh, instead of a warhead, and they are launched uh, like a couple of hundred meters at the enemy positions. And uh, when this mine lands, it shoots out like uh, threads. And if this thread is touched, the mine goes off, and uh, it's wow. uh, it, it's um, it contains like big amount of explosives so it's uh, main uh, oh my god i forgot all the english words uh, it kills like with the with the blast basically wow. that's old sad. school nasty yeah exactly exactly and then we had uh, one more from level 70 for Canadian $6.99 said, Hi, Starsky. How do you think Russia's use of Iranian drones will impact the front lines? That's a very good question. Uh, well, I hope that uh, we will have them targeted, I mean, before they reach the front lines. Uh, Again, uh, we must understand that uh, all kinds of intelligence, all kinds of satellites are currently working for Ukraine and uh, supporting us with information. So I'm sure that uh, we will be able to spot uh, the, you know, the, the cargo that uh, reaches the front lines and uh, we will be able to deal uh, with that uh, before 
uh, those drones will be used against our forces. Excellent, excellent. And thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, thank but you, on, on, the, on the other hand, of course, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, most of all, I hope that uh, Iranian uh, people will be wise enough not to give them drones in the first place. Damn right. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, we, we have a video I want to show quick. It's from Radio Free Europe um uh, youtube channel um i hope they don't get too mad at us for showing it because you know it's all uh you know we're on the same page here um it is um ukraine unleashing a hurricane of rockets and it's just one of those videos that's awesome to see so i'm gonna kick it in i'm gonna kick the audio in too um i'll turn it down a little bit so uh maybe if we're chattering over it it will help us not get in trouble and uh here let's share something cool Uh, yeah, so uh, what, what... Yeah, so, so it's like it's like a modernized uh, hurricane system that uh, was used in Soviet times and uh, uh they use the combat module the 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 very launch system uh from hurricane and uh, they use the, the uh, check made tatra as uh, as a carrier uh and th the most interesting thing of course is what kind of rockets or are those missiles uh, what what kind of uh, rockets do they use because this yeah. um, uh, this uh, vehicle is able to basically launch guided missiles like uh, HIMARS yeah there's but, a there's a spot yeah, but, in this but, video starsky where they talk yeah. about how you guys have sub are increased the range in a big way yeah yeah uh, of course from from what i see here I see just ordinary rockets, uh, but again, um, you can load uh, different, like those ones, you see, uh, those ones, um, but you can load different kind of ammunition inside those tubes. It looks like a really effective weapon because that, that you know, as a vehicle seems to be capable of, you know, getting them off and then getting the hell out of there because now your position is given away. You got to go, right? Uh, yeah, of course. But uh, again, even, even the more, like, more interesting thing is the uh, uh, aiming system. So... Uh, there's uh, like new electronics. I, I don't think that I can talk m much about it, but uh, yeah, they use improved uh, improved electronics for guiding, for aiming uh, those artillery systems at, at the enemy. Cool. It's it's a it's a great video to see because it's quite powerful. Um, it, it, it it's from a close enough point of view where you get a sense of what it's like to be around that thing in a, you know, in an obvious video audio way, but still it, it was pretty good. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends have sent me a video uh, of his new, uh, his new baby. So he's a commander of, he was assigned as a commander of a uh, German Panzerhaubitze. Oh my God, that that thing is like something from future, you know? Uh, so it, it's huge, it's advanced, and and this guy is absolutely happy about it. So yeah, he, he showed me some, <laughs> some videos and yeah, it, it's amazing. 
Well, uh, we might have to show that coming up in the future. Definitely. Um, let's let's switch over to Dave here because I'm sure there's some questions we could get to now. Um, and uh, we don't want to leave anybody waiting too long, do we? No, not at all. Not at all. U.S. federal agents. Um, I don't know who this question is from. Trying to find out how American electronics ended up in Russian drones. Have you heard anything about this, Starsky? Um, that's a good question, um, because what we found personally, what I found in Russian drone that Orlan was a bunch of, um, uh, uh, Japanese and Chinese made electronics. Uh, so for example, they used, uh, Japanese Saito engine, uh, for, for their Orlan drone. Um, they used, uh, electronics from Honda um, and uh, other countries. Uh, well, I, I hope that uh, this investigation will bring some kind of results because we all want to know how it happened. Uh, again, I think that uh, they can find ways. Probably they bought a bunch of, you know, uh, American-made laundry machines or something like that. There is a very similar question as well from Ali, who's a new member. Hello to you. Uh, is it true that Putin is going to be getting drones from Iran? The story resurfaced again a couple of days ago. Uh, I talked to uh, a person from Iran, and uh, I've been told that uh, Iran is not going to give them drones. Um, also, uh, like on the official level, I know that there are uh, like uh, constant like negotiations, like communication with uh, our uh, Ira Iranian counterparts, and uh, they promise that uh, no, they won't support uh, Russia as well as Ukraine uh, in this war. Um, I hope that they will be wise enough. Because, uh, again, it's kind of, you know, we, we're living in a century in a period of time where when you better have like a lot of friends and partners rather than like being isolated from the world. Because like you cannot exist being isolated. And if you can you cannot call it life. Take a look at North Korea, right? Um, so I think that uh, they will be wise enough. Uh, in my personal opinion, and uh, I'm I'm not a specialist in this, but in my personal opinion, it would be much more beneficial for Iran to sell to like sell their oil uh, and their resources to Europe instead of Russia. And they would have like multiple sanctions, uh, like raised, right? Um, that that's my personal opinion. That they, they would benefit much more from this kind of partnership. Uh, so I I hope they will be wise enough to make it happen. There's a, there's an easy analogy to this, Starsky. In the modern world of big business, if you look at Microsoft, Apple, yada, yada, so on and so forth, nobody stands alone. There's key partnerships that must be made. And if you don't play properly, you're out of the loop. I mean, um, Apple's gone with their own chips and their new laptops, but they have a big partner in TSMC, the chip manufacturer. And without them, they're screwed. You, It just doesn't work that way. Those days are long over. Yeah, yeah. Take Japan, for example. So Japan was so much isolated from the rest of the world for like centuries. Um, and uh, what happened after the Meiji reforms, uh, when they adopted Western technologies and Western approach and uh, Western knowledge, uh, they became like one of the strongest uh, countries in the world. And uh, that's, that's exactly what happens. First, 
it's of course people but uh, on the second place there's like partnership and knowledge and uh, best practices that you can implement in your country uh, but on, on the first place you have to have uh, great relations with with your neighbors with uh, your trade partners and things like uh, things like that exactly Here, we have a couple, uh, I think, that Amy needs to get to here. Um, oh, yeah, more than a couple. Um, I wonder, yeah, there she is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, we have um, M2M um, from a member message says, age of the tank is dead, age of the drone is here. Thank you very much, Matt. That's a then, that's a good point. It goes back because I was going to jump in when he was when he put that in. Um, you know, uh, the USSR mm -hmm. was looking impressive in the Cold War days with those big marches and all the artillery and blah 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 and whatnot. But that's mm -hmm. not quite modern warfare anymore, is it? <laughs> no. It'd be quite um, interesting to see the May Day parade with some drones flying down the street. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I would not underestimate tanks. There's always a bigger fish, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, there's always uh, countermeasures against drones. Uh, drones are good to kill tanks. Tanks are good to kill people and destroy structures. Um, it, it, it just depends on the situation. It depends on your uh, tactics. Yeah, never underestimate a big bullet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like uh, we can uh, ha we can hunt down those uh, electronic warfare machines mm -hmm. that jam the and suppress the communication with drones using, uh, for example, uh, American. Uh, harm missiles, right? Uh, Russians can hunt down our airplanes armed with those missiles, anti-radar missiles or uh, something like that, with their anti-aircraft measures. Uh, we can use or, or like, it, it, it's very connected. I mean, it's like, you know, in medieval times, it was a bit uh, much simpler. So it's like yeah. you had you had uh, pikemen who would fight swordsmen. Yeah. Swordsmen were kind of like better than pikemen. Uh, you could, uh, depends, of course, you had archers who would fight pikemen and swordsmen on the distance. You had uh, cavalry who would fight swordsmen and uh, archers, but they were absolutely inefficient against pikemen. And it's like interconnected. It, it, it depends on what you have in a current situation. Uh, same here on a battlefield. It's kind of much more uh, complex, I would say. But it's like interconnected. Uh, drones are efficient in uh, hunting like tanks, but uh, there's always a bigger fish. Uh, there's always measures against drones and there's always measures against those measures that right. uh, combat drones and stuff like that. Uh, that's pro, the intricacy pro. of proper command is utilizing the resources one step better than the other, right? Yeah, that's the point. So uh, it depends on on how you can uh, use what you have, your resources, uh, and uh, if you can use them better than your enemy. Uh, so, for example, uh, we all know that Russians spend a lot of, like, waste a lot of their uh, shells on civilian structures. Uh, is that a, like is that efficient? Uh, it's efficient in terms of you know um, capturing the empty city. So, for example, when our soldiers have 
no, no don't have nothing to defend because the city is gone and they have to retreat and Russians take the city yeah this works but doesn't works uh, does it work in terms of eliminating personnel not so much because uh, Russians cannot shoot their artillery precisely Russians have this saying that um, artillery работает по площадям it means that uh, Russian artillery works not against targets but against areas uh, it's as as close as I can translate it uh, so it's not like you're shooting at an object you're shooting at an area and uh, they are convinced that this is the correct way of using their artillery because they used they got used to use their artillery against personnel in the first place in ukraine we got used to use our artillery to target specific objects uh, at least at this point in this period of uh, this war uh, we we are doing what is much more efficient it's much more efficient to spend uh, that small amount of shells that we have on yep. the most important targets rather than uh, using like that small amount on their personnel and then you know it it won't be as efficient as what we do now no it's it's very akin to the Viet Cong and we know how that worked out right Amy <laughs> right right exactly <laughs> yeah I, I think that uh, our point our our goal is uh, to make Russians actually um uh, get into a close combat with our army because they suck in terms of close combat um that's why they use a lot of their long-range weapons and uh, that's why they concentrate as much of those long-range weapons as they can uh, i'm talking about like artillery and uh, and missiles and stuff like that uh so yeah that that's like they realize that they suck at close range combat probably uh, like during the the first weeks of their invasion when they were losing like a uh, thousand men per day mm -hmm. um in a close combat and mm -hmm. uh already like a couple of weeks into this invasion uh they switched to using the, their uh, long-range weapons, mostly. Uh, like in Huta Mazihirska, it, it was not far from uh, Hostomel. Uh, yeah, uh, we faced their artillery a lot. So, and uh, th there was uh, a big battle for the village of Moshun, uh, like two-thirds of this village were uh, later destroyed by Russian artillery. Um, we had a lot of uh, street uh, combat with Russian forces and they were losing badly. So yeah, that's why they decided that uh, it's much better to use uh, long-range weapons. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. And then we have Sam Williams, who donated Canadian $10, says, sorry, these are slightly off topic, but I wanted to know what I'm talking about when these topics come up. Do you know anything about the idea that the Russian language at present is a dialect of Bulgarian? That's an interesting question. Um, I, I'm not a specialist. Uh, what I know is that uh, there's a lot of Asian words in uh, Russian language, a lot of Turk oh. words, uh, words like uh, Sarai, for example, and, and things like that. Um, so, it, like, I, I cannot say if it's like a dialect of Bulgarian language. It's uh, kind of similar, but on the other hand, uh, most of Slavic languages are very, very similar like okay. polish slavic and uh, stuff like that but what's interesting is that uh, ukrainians can easily understand uh people from poland for example 
and people from Poland can easily understand people from like Czechia, people from Slovakia, uh, and we can easily wow. understand people who speak Belarusian language. Russians have issues with that; they don't understand nobody. <laughs> I mean it. I mean it's 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 like some kind of paradox. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's interesting. Thank you. Fitting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then we had a super chat from level 70 for Canadian $13.99 said recently Ukrainian soldiers have found dead bodies with green armbands with Arabic or Persian writing on them. What nationality could these soldiers be? Syrians, Iranian volunteers? Um, they could even be um, some kind of uh, Abkhazians or Ossetians. Um, I mean, they could uh, come from uh, Caucasus, right? From okay. from those areas of uh, Russian Caucasus. Okay. Um, they could even be from, I don't know, Chechnya, Dagestan, those countries. But, of course, uh, we know exactly that uh, they have a bunch, not a lot, uh, but uh, a bunch of uh, mercenaries from uh, Syria. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, they wanted to uh, enlist like 30,000 30, men from Syria once. But mm -hmm. they failed, uh, and we've talked about it already. Uh, they failed because... Uh, they weren't able to pay them in advance. And, of course, because uh, after like uh, a month of this invasion, um, th their casualties became known, like all around the world. Okay. And uh, Syrians weren't kind of fanatic about, you know, going to uh, Russia and then going to Ukraine and die there. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so they failed. But they're still like, uh, like they, they try to find and enlist as much people as they can. Okay. They try to hire somebody. They try to mobilize somebody. They try to hire people from prisons, those convicts, uh, because they don't have enough people to continue fighting successfully and capture what they want to capture. And by the way, I think that Commander had some question. Okay. Um, I heard someone, one of those people that you recommended in your earlier videos had a video where um, someone on Russian TV not RT, but of just a proper, you know, just like a fake news network. They're all fake news networks. Was talking about North Koreans coming to Ukraine. Um, about a hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, I've heard about it. Uh, I, I don't think that. Uh, uh, th they will be a big threat to us. Um, but like, we will see. I mean, at this point, we don't have any information that would confirm that. Uh, what they say about those, uh, North Koreans, uh, it may happen, but at this point we don't have information that can confirm it anyways. Uh, Korean, uh, North Korean army is stuck in 80s i would say i mean i grew up uh, among soviet militaries uh later there there were ukrainian militaries but i remember soviet army and north korea is basically a soviet army uh they they stuck in 80s and uh they didn't develop since that time at all um uh, I don't know. Uh, Russians have much more developed army, even comparing to North Koreans. Uh, but uh, from what I know, uh, like the, they are very, very outdated. Even Belarusians are much more advanced than North Korean army. Interesting. 
Thank you so much. And then we got a super chat from Sam. Oh, well, she donated. I'm sorry. Sam Williams donated Canadian $8.24. Says, do you think it will be a long time before trade between Ukraine and Russia resumes? Or is it a good idea to reduce it? Um, I think uh, at, at this very point, it's a bad idea. Why? Because uh, mm -hmm. every... Uh, coin that is sent to Russia is uh, spent on a war against Ukraine. Uh, and uh, we are not into committing suicide this way. Right. So I think that uh, probably sometime in the future when Russia uh, becomes a different country, it, it's possible, of course. And of course, uh, like we know that, uh, for example, uh, based on our experience of the World War II, yeah, of course it's possible. Uh, times uh, time can pass, and uh, people can change, generations can change. Uh, but at this very point, I think that it's a very, very bad idea to trade with them. Exactly. Thank you so much. And then we have Jonesy for Australian $30.99 says, Minds that look like toys, I have lost my appetite. Is there no limit to their depravity? It must be very hard to continue to fight with honor and decency, but you must or you will become them. We stand with you. Never give up. Thank you so much, Jonesy. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we all have like a little angel on one shoulder and uh, a little devil on another shoulder. And I think that this devil is basically represented by Putin. Never listen to what he says. It sucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And then we have Bob Perrin for $20 American says, Operator Starsky, please consider reaching out to the YouTuber Andrew Vas... Vasilyenko, um, I think a nice word from you would go a long way for his and his family's morale. Bless you, sir. Slava Ukraini. Andrew Vasilenko, okay, okay, I will, I will write it down, and okay. yeah, I, I, I will consider uh, at, at least learning about this man. Excellent. Thank you so much. And then we had. Um, a donation from Autistic Shill for $20 Canadian said for Starsky, Slava Ukraini from Karen and family. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, buddy. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Level 70 for Canadian $6.99 says, why is Denis Pushilin still alive? Ukraine has very good intelligence, so I'm surprised he is still breathing. Uh, yeah, but on the other hand, you gotta, uh, check out how many, uh, Russian and, and pro-Russian leaders were, uh, executed by this time. So probably like 90% of them, uh, have met their great grandparents, uh, their biggest, uh, I, I wouldn't call them leaders. They were rather like. Um, uh, uh, talking heads on a TV. Okay, um, talking about uh, Motorola and Givi, uh, they are dead. Uh, Zhilin died also, and he died in Russia, by the way. Uh, Batman, Moskovoy, and and. Uh, Kazitsyn, as far as I remember, and and uh, Mamai, they, they all died. And uh, partially, what's uh, even more interesting is that they were killed by FSB, by Russian FSB, Russian intelligence. Uh, so, yeah, they, they will die sooner or later, including Pushilin, I'm sure. Um, and uh, Interesting fact is that 40% of Russian uh, generals responsible for this invasion, uh, they are not dead, but uh, they are kind of fired. So uh, we have information that uh, 
uh, Putin has fired forty uh, percent of those responsible for the, for this invasion because of all their fails, and it doesn't get better actually for Russians. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, looking at the time, we still got a little bit before we could do a little roundtable goodbye and a couple of questions from us. Um, oh, actually, it's uh, we got 25 minutes. So let's do two more questions from viewers there, Dave, and then we'll get a couple in from the panel because I know everybody's got a couple, right? As they always do. I hope there's uh, no background noise coming through there. There might be a little bit in the background. So uh, Annette uh, Wagner said, uh, or Wagner said, I saw something on YouTube that the Russian army is so low on all-terrain vehicles, they are taking Jeeps, Land Rovers, and other vehicles from Russian citizens to use in Ukraine. Is this real or propaganda? Um. I cannot confirm it, but uh, I know that uh, recently they changed their legislation. Uh, so, uh, of course, according to the law, they can uh, use civilian vehicles uh, for their military needs. Uh, but um, interesting thing is that they changed their legislation. Uh, recently, it was uh, the, the new law was adopted by uh, Russia, by Putin. Uh, so, uh, Ru Russian factories have to uh, repair and supply Russian army for free. And, like, it, it doesn't matter uh, if they have, like, enough resources for, th for that, uh, including, like, human resources. They have to uh, support Russian army for free. Uh, which actually uh, resulted in like uh, big like like disappointment among uh, Russian businessmen because now they have uh, quite a lot of pro of problems and uh, they cannot reject uh, those uh, requests from Russian army of course because they will be prosecuted so. Life in Russia becomes better and better every day. Yeah, yeah said with the conviction of a true believer. Wow. <laughs> and, um, I, I do uh, here. I want to bring up something here. Um, there was a article in a paper local to Canada. I'll bring it up here. And... It's from the National Post, which is, uh, you know, if you're one of those people that wants to argue left and right, well, that'll take all night, so I'm not going to bother. But I really don't want to go. Russia struggles to replenish its troops. And Russia's officially offering amnesty for prisoners willing to fight as soldiers and law enforcement officers are now refusing deployment. Uh, yeah, so once again, we know that uh, they were hiring or or em employing uh, convicts. Um, I don't think that it's a good idea, actually. Uh, actually, it's against law because uh, convicts cannot be operating weapons. I know for sure, like in uh, Russia, they have this law, they cannot uh, enlist criminals. Uh, but we're talking about law uh, and Russia. Of course, they don't combine. Um, so, yeah, but uh, from what we heard from, from the reports, uh, a lot of those convicts are already dead. And I and because the news in that society is spread very very fast, I think that uh, they will think twice before you know uh, leaving their prison where they are uh, supplied with free food and uh, free entertainment and stuff like that, shelter. Uh, you know what I'm what I mean? Yeah. 
Um, let's see here. There was uh, a couple from in the panel. So, uh, DK, I knew you had one. Commander as well. Um, here, I'll do this uh, alphabetically. So, Commander, you're up first there. You wanted to bring something in, right? Um, when you were actually talking about, am I, uh, I think I'm coming through. Okay. When you were yeah, yeah. talking about, um, Russia basically not producing anything, uh, this week I managed to, um, find out that you were, pr Ukraine was producing some parts for, um, uh, Russian vehicles. In addition to that, Russia stole your aircraft carrier, I think, in 91. And the first um, Soviet aircraft carrier was called the Kiev. Do you think that um, there's a pattern going on here where Ukraine makes and Russia takes? Um, it It was always like that throughout the history. Uh, so, for example, the reason why um, uh, why Crimea was part of Ukraine was because uh, every time Russia tried to manage Crimea, uh, they would fail dramatically. And... Uh, when Ukraine, um, basically Ukrainian SSR, uh, Ukrainian Republic in inside of uh, USSR, uh, ac like acquired uh, this uh, territory, uh, we have built a lot of industrial structures. We have developed uh, Crimea much. Uh, we have made a lot of um, resorts for for people. Uh, one of the biggest uh, um, so so we had like in Soviet times we had those uh, pioneers. They were called pioneers, uh, basically like analog of Boy Scouts, only communists. So uh, there was like the biggest pioneer uh, camp uh, in Crimea, the, the, the biggest and greatest in whole USSR. And yeah, it was built by Ukrainians. Um, and by the way, yeah, it's currently stolen. Uh, so uh, whenever Russians failed to manage Crimea, Ukrainians would do that. Um, and it's like throughout the history. Uh, so Russians, and it, it's like documented even in Lenin's memoirs. So uh, Russians always thought of Ukraine as th the source for uh, resources like uh, bread, like coil, like metal, and things like that. So like I, i'm not I, like i'm not surprised at all uh because it was always like that yeah um let's turn next to dk i know dkg had one he wanted to get in for sure and i don't want to be skipping people so uh, i probably give him enough time to put his drink down put the cigarette out and grab his mute button no, you just gave me time to uh, uh, roll a new one and get more drinks out. <laughs> there you go. You? Hey, you're on the better oh. end of the curve. I love it. <laughs> no, I've, it's actually, Starsky, it's, it's a little bit of a shitty question, actually, because, I mean, I, I don't know how many days into this war we are now. Uh, it's it's a long, long time now. And so, like, relatively early into the war, all these, like, the... the, the um, media like sky news that have like a military pundit who would come up and go through the map and talk about the russian strategies and how the war is going and in all that time they were you know they were saying oh um we think the russians have probably got about you know a month left in the fight before they have to give it up and then that month passes and they oh they, they've got two weeks left before you know they run out of 
you know, ability to fight. And then another two weeks passes and the same thing again, same thing again. Just constantly hearing that the Russians are running out of steam. Um, but it's not happening, is it? I mean, what what do you think about this this kind of false promises that we keep we were getting that the the Russians are just not going to be able to keep going? Um, first of all, uh, I've heard the th same thing about Ukraine. So it's like two more weeks and Ukraine is done. You know, uh, from from all kinds of experts, including Western experts. Uh, but uh, what we were saying about Russians, actually, yeah, it happened. Only they managed to find some ways to, you know, to to solve the situation as much as they could. Uh, for example, uh, currently we can see that uh, they have lost 50% uh, of their potential and they cannot develop their attacks anymore and they have to uh, switch to defensive operations uh, a lot of people were hoping that uh, you know this uh, invasion would stop because it like russians have this ability to go beyond what's rational right i mean it was rational reasonable to uh, stop this operation and not even begin it but they started it it was uh, reasonable uh, not to send their uh, columns into attack because nobody attacks this way in the whole world but they did and they lost uh, approximately 43,000 men already, and I'm talking about dead. Uh, so, but they managed to continue pushing because uh, now it's all in for, for Putin. And uh, he literally doesn't know how to finish this war. That's why he continues to do what he's, do what he's doing. Jeez. There's, yes. I mean, we, we could do a complete episode just focused on Putin's, you know, behavior in public. Then you could do another mm -hmm. one on the psychology of it and on and on. It's just what a mess. What a mess. Um, but Absolutely. looking at the time, right, Amy, looking at the time, mm -hmm. um, yes. we should probably do a quick round table of wrap ups and goodbyes and stuff because we got pub chat coming up. We do, and we also have a super chat I didn't get to get to, so that would be excellent as well. We have um, Putin will hang in the middle of Kremlin and <laughs> send us a super chat for 10 Australian dollars, says Ukraine will prevail. And it's got some muscles and some Ukrainian flags and some hearts. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. That's awesome. What that a username. Awesome. Wow. That is. I know. That's a long handle. <laughs> I like it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. And now we can get to the round table. Thank you so much. So first, I'm going to start off with Claire S. Bear. Claire, what are your thoughts on this evening? Oh, well, it was a very interesting conversation. I, I enjoy getting the updates. And thank you again, Stasi, for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, again, I didn't answer all the questions, uh, unfortunately, because a lot of them were yeah. not on my level. I literally yeah. uh, can only judge f f about things on my level, and I'm yeah. not a high-ranked general, unfortunately. I, I uh, don't have a lot of details to share. Uh, so sorry if I didn't answer uh, some of your questions. It's like, you know how things happen in the army. And oh. I, I literally don't want to turn into a chair-born mm -hmm. uh, specialist expert in, in a warfare arm. Like, mostly talking about what I know. Yeah. I'm sure that's appreciated by everyone. Or what you can speak on, you do very well. So I'm sure it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. 100%. That's right. Thank you so much. And then next up, we have DKG Custom. DKG, what are your thoughts on this evening? Um, 
Uh, my bollocks are sweating. It's hot. Uh, what else do you want? I know. Oh, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're done. <laughs> uh, thank you, Starsky. You keep it up, brother. You, oh, you poor little sod out there. Yeah, fighting the old, fighting the good fight as always. Slava Ukraine. Hey, thank you, thank you. Kiss me good night, soldier major. <laughs> <laughs> Stay cool. It looks like Monday or Tuesday you're gonna get some a cool down there, DKG. I was checking. I'm gonna the be forecast. I'm gonna be out there pantless, just standing <laughs> in the rain, just soaking it up. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and next up we have Commander 401. Commander, what are your thoughts on this evening? Excellent show. Uh stay safe, Starsky, Slava Ukraine. And can't wait for all the shills to make sure that when you visit either Europe or North America, you are happy and hammered. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> nice one. Thanks. Yes. And then we had another super chat from... Looks like Putin will hang in the middle of the Kremlin again for $2. I love that name. Thank you. NATO can solve the problem in a few days. <laughs> There's an angry face on it. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Liam, Liam Wakefield pushed the, the interruption button even further there, Amy. <laughs> yes, he did. Liam Wakefield for two pounds sterling says roundtable interrupt us. Donation. <laughs> <That's brilliant. laughs> and then Donny Boy, Canadian $2. We never get tired of your reporting, Starsky. Thank you so much. And then, still not done yet. <laughs> we have Rudy Rudisil for 10 American dollars. So Starsky, Shills, and audience, I wanted to thank everyone for the merch orders. The response has been amazing. I promise you all will love it. P.S. Check out the new design. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much, Rudy. That's brilliant. Thank you. We got to get so, the link in the description after. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And then we, I think that's pretty much it for those. And then, <laughs> so I think we're good there. And then so we can continue on our round table. Then we have up next, we have Fallacy Dave. Dave, what are your thoughts on this evening? A wonderful night as always. I hope... Starsky, you have the endurance to fight with the uh, same intensity as six months ago. Um, because obviously when you're fighting for something that matters as much as this, then you'll never run out of energy. You'll never run out of fight. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we're all here for you. So Slava Ukraini. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. And that's right. We're all here. So that which is good. Then we have next up, we have Dick Dawson. Dick, what are your thoughts on this evening? Well, we should give old man Putin the uh, the old one finger salute here. No! So, and then if you reach <laughs> in and do it even deeper, you got the two finger salute. <laughs> <laughs> and all of your actions going to be a mountain too. So here, hats <laughs> off to you, bitch. There we go. <laughs> and then before I continue on, we've got Liam Wakefield for two pounds sterling says, thank you, Mr. Dawson. And then we have, um, Donny boy, 73 for Canadian, $2 says Slava Ukraini. And then we also have Blue Neptune for $20 American says, for us who follow this possible third war, it's so cool to have Starsky there, a real soldier that describes it from the inside. Thank you so much. We appreciate that so much. And I think I've caught them all. <laughs> so on we go. <laughs> so well, I think it's your you. turn, Amy. Oh, thank oh. you. Yes. Guys, I, I, I just wanted to add that uh, we all do what we can at this point. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, pr uh, probably uh, th there would be much more sense from my work on a on the front line. Uh, yeah, because uh, I'm currently like a base plankton, okay? But uh, I'm doing what I can as a communications person, and uh, I'm trying mm -hmm. to uh, bring you all the information and uh, explain you 
uh, a lot of things that I know that uh, people didn't know about Ukrainians, about Russians, of course. And uh, yeah, I I appreciate uh, that y- you are listening to to uh, these streams and and my videos as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Great Absolutely. Show. Thank you so much. And you were up next. So <laughs> if there's anything else you'd like to add, Starsky? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, caring, actually, uh, about uh, what happens uh, here. Oh, and actually, it's it's now an air strike alarm here in Kiev. Uh, thank you so much for caring and uh, for uh, not standing aside you know and pretending nothing happens because this Absolutely. is the the worst thing that uh, we can do uh so yeah as i said everyone is soldier now and uh, even if you are out there but uh, you stand for ukraine that's already a big achievement and big support for us so thank you Absolutely. Thank you so much. And then we did get another super chat from Level 70 for Canadian $6.99. He says, I heard Ukraine raised 700, well, it looks like $700,000 by selling pictures of naked soldiers. The girls are waiting for Max's debut. <laughs> thank you so much. I do want to thank everyone for coming. I want Starsky to stay safe. Please stay safe, Slava Ukraini. I want to thank everyone on the panel for coming tonight. Thank you so much for all of your help. And I want to thank everyone in the chat for coming as well. Thank you so much. And thank you all for your support. So I want to wish you all a great evening. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Hey, everybody. And uh, here we've got pub chat coming up in 10 minutes. I'm putting the link in the right in the description right now if i can figure out how to do a copy paste i don't know what happened there so swing on over and watch us for our next show pub chat and on that note i think it's time to say good night good night everybody good night good night good night, good night. Thank you. secret subliminal message coming at you <laughs> too grubby Gotta have the grub. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>
It's over. Go home. <laughs>